Nancy Klein's thinking environment is a set of 10 conditions, the intention of which is to create a situation in which all participants are made free to think for themselves. And this can apply in one-to-one -one teaching situations or indeed within group work. So the first condition is attention. I will listen to you with interest and without interruption. So the act of listening, the quality of listening is seen to be really important and the teacher's ability to listen needs to be absolutely superb in thinking environments. It needs to create that space so that you can think for yourself. And Nancy Klein herself states this really strongly. She says that in a thinking environment to interrupt is an act of violence. And this might sound like it's overstating things somewhat. However, if you want to share something that's really worrying or upsetting to you, or equally, if you want to share something that you're really enthusiastic and excited about, if you're interrupted, it can feel frustrating, you can feel thwarted and undervalued. So listening is really important in thinking environments. Also important is equality. I assume that you and I are equal as thinkers, perhaps not as knowers. I know more about you than some things. You know more about some things than I do. But as thinkers, we are equal. Also important is ease. I will be comfortable with any pace you choose to set and I will not hurry you. A feeling of ease creates whereas urgency destroys. So we need to work together to make sure that the environment is free from any rush, particularly internal rush, and the ease will help you to find time to discover the incisive questions that you need in order to break through to find your answer. So to allow things to develop naturally in their own time, ease is vital. Appreciation, I will offer you genuine acknowledgement of your qualities as a thinker and this will be concrete praise, not lip service, but a genuine sharing of appreciation for each other's qualities as thinkers. Also encouragement, I'll give you every encouragement necessary without interrupting you to enable you to think effectively. So it's avoiding crowding your airtime, but as a teacher, I'll try to encourage you to go as far as you want to go with your thinking. Feelings, I will not interrupt the expression of your feelings and will not hurry you to pull yourself together. So feelings that are generated from prior experiences can limit people's uh, assumptions about what they're able to achieve in a new environment because they think, oh no, I'm not prepared to go there because of what happened the last time I tried that. And those feelings are very true and real within the learner and they can limit um, their ability to find new solutions. So there's never any denying that those feelings are very, very real and they're not to be dismissed. But together we can acknowledge that and acknowledge the crippling power of those feelings feelings on occasion and find a way to think differently and reach for and achieve liberating assumptions. Broadly speaking, this allows a safe place for some emotional release that can restore the opportunity to think rationally. Silence and learning to embrace silence is vital here too and it links in to that easeful environment that allows time for things to unfold, not always having to rush to find an answer, not needing to think I must act right now. Information. I will support you to find out what you need to know and not deny what you already know. So I will offer my insights and my thoughts when you are ready for them. I won't prescribe a schedule of activities that you need to stick to uh, and this is because different people will be ready or keen to do different things at different times. But where some information that I hold can help you and when you are ready for it I will offer it to you. Diversity. I love the fact that you think differently to me. Incisive questions. I will ask you the questions that enable your thinking to break free from limiting assumptions. So as thinking partners or people working together in a thinking environment, we will we'll try to design and formulate those incisive questions that you need to move forward. It's best if the words come from you, but as a teacher, I will help you to find those questions, that real vital element to help you break 
from free from limiting assumptions of the past and encourage you to be brave and to think at the cutting edge of what you're able to do. Place. We will try to make sure that we are physically comfortable for the duration of our time together. Finding a place where and when we can meet that is comfortable for all of us, that is convenient for all of us uh, and is possible given the time and spaces to which we have access. And creating a space that's conducive shows that all the participants matter and that is really important too. So to reiterate, the 10 components of Nancy Klein's thinking environment are attention, equality, ease, appreciation, encouragement, feelings, diversity, incisive questions and place. Now, if these 10 components are accepted and embedded, then the experience can be really quite profound. How can we then manage to remember and maintain all of those 10 components? Well, the answer is that it becomes uh, internalised, if you like. It becomes habitual if it's used regularly within uh, teaching. And so you eventually get to the point where you can say we're going to create now a thinking environment and if people are well rehearsed in this they will have internalized it so it becomes a way of being a, a disposition towards oneself and one's learners and something that is of the heart that one can ascribe to as um, conducive to good participative learning and an equality of approach that engages everybody and involves everybody in their own personal development.